in this here make me tough to you snack cake to me yeah more house more house this been overdue forever forever ask me when it was dropping said never never should have made you cut the feather but i designed it freemason margella what's good he shall try here the most woke no joking i'm back out again with a brand new video and i'm gonna keep it up bow bray biscuit i gotta stop doing this bro uh, you know what I try to keep this channel family friendly. What I do is, I'm not trying to like not make a video after a loss because I'm not worried about losses. I'm not really scared or like too worried about when we lose. But when I see such terrible things, but I, I'm gonna get into what I, what I really feel about this game. But when I see some of the things I'm seeing in these games, if I get on the camera, I'm gonna say a lot of things about a lot of people that I'm gonna regret. If you follow me on Twitter, you you know that during the games, I'm tweeting the things that are happening during the game. And after the game, look, I had I, I had a tweet. And I I said it. I was like, look, if I record a video this very second, I'm gonna say a lot of things about a lot of people that I really can't take back. And I don't I don't wanna I don't wanna be that kind of person to say those kind of things in the heat of the moment because I can I can't be that kind of person. I can't be that kind of person who might just say something and then I'll have to apologize a little bit later. Either way, even if we lose and get beat by 80 the rest of the year, I'll make sure I always do my videos Sunday night. Uh, I was going to do it yesterday, Monday, but I actually, my, my homie's in town and I actually uh, had to kick with him a little bit. I had to do a few things, make a few moves. Anyway, enough about that, enough preamble, enough of all this introduction kind of stuff because we got to get straight into this game right now. 20-19, to 19, what can I say? The only good thing I saw in this game, one of the good things, one of the two good things I saw in this game was the jerseys. We went full blackout and all black jerseys, they were all black pants, and we went black socks for the very first time. I'm actually very surprised that's our first time going black socks. That's what they said. I, I'm trying to think in my head if all the other times we've gone blackout, did we go blue socks? I, I feel like we had to have gone black socks before, but if they say it's the very first time we've had black socks, I guess I'm going to have to believe them. I don't have any kind of evidence to, like, I don't want to go back every single year and find out what socks we were wearing. And the all grays from the lines look pretty clean, too. I can't even lie. With the thin blue lines on it, I actually kind of felt that, too. But that, like I said, was probably one of the only good things that I saw in this game because, once again, our defense looked horrible. That's the main story here. And I'm missing a lot of this this whole fire Eric Washington nonsense. Like, oh, man, if we had a different defensive coordinator, we wouldn't be doing this. But my thing is, look. If we need a new defensive coordinator to tell these people who are in their mid-20s, maybe up to their mid-30s, and even yeah, up there to the upper 30s, how to tackle someone, you're a professional football player. You've been playing football for at least 8, let's call it 10, maybe 12 years of your life. Competitive. If you do not know, you have to lead with your shoulder pad and wrap the man up to tackle him. If you need someone, if you need a coach to tell you that, we can talk about scheme, we can talk about guys being in the wrong positions, but if you're going to blame the defensive coordinator for grown men, now I could ask you right now, without me even saying before, if I said, what's the proper way to tackle somebody? And you would probably know, you have to hit them with your shoulder pad and wrap them up. We're out here arm tackling and just going for a hit sticks with just shoulder pad. If you want to blame that on Eric Washington, if you actually believe that Eric Washington's in practice saying, all right guys, I know you were taught to wrap up and hit with a shoulder pad, but how about just doing one or the other? How about just arm tackling? If you think that Eric Washington is actually telling these guys to have poor tackling form at practice, what what do I tell you? I, I mean, I, I guess that's what you want to believe. I mean, what what what, what about? I, I don't I don't understand how that's Eric Washington's fault. If you're gonna say, oh, we need to have more discipline, discipline. These are grown men. I mean, I understand not being in the right position or like being out of not knowing your assignments in the secondary. I understand if you're like an edge rusher and you're like not staying in your lane and not containing the quarterback to the pocket. You're trying to just bull rush and you get pushed out of the play. That's discipline. That's scheming. That's coaching. But if you don't know how to actually tackle, tackling, well, if, if you need drills, if you, I saw someone somewhere <laughs> actually suggest we need to have Eric Washington doing tackling drills during practice. If you need to do tackling drills, if you need to be taught the form for good tackling at this stage in the game, week week 12 of an NFL game, you've been playing way too long to have to have a refresher on how to tackle people in the professional national football league. We're making Carrion Johnson look like Barry Sanders out there. I don't think that's on Eric Washington. We can fire him if we want to, but what's firing him do? And my question is, my real thing about firing Eric Washington, people who say that it's like, Okay, so it's week 12 in the NFL season. Who do we get? Now what? What's your plan here? 
Because if you don't have an actual solution to the problem, if your solution is get rid of a guy and that's it, do you... Uh, now we're in a bigger mess. Now we don't have an offensive coordinator. So, so what are we gonna do now? What, what do you do? The questions are, who's available now? Who's available now who is better than Eric Washington, for sure. Who's available now who's better than Eric Washington and can communicate to these guys how to play defense a different way in week 12 with what? Different signals? The same signals? I mean, the play call is gonna be different. What's his scheme gonna be? We have to find a guy who fits our scheme and can get through to these older guys. It's not like we have a bunch of rookies who are playing badly. Uh, we have veterans on our defense who are not playing well. How do you bring in a new voice in the locker room and tell vets? You tell you tell Julius Peppers, you're telling Thomas Davis Sr., you're telling Luke, you're telling Mike Adams to change the way they've been doing things. I mean, you want to tell me who we can bring in, then we can talk. But unless you have an actual solution to the problem and it's not just fire a guy, what are we talking about? What, what are we actually talking about? I don't know what to say to, to fire this guy. The next question is, and then what? It's week 13. It's, <laughs> who are you going to get? There's, there's more to the process than just fire this man. And you think it should be Ron Rivera. Who's to say that he actually wants that responsibility? And who's to say he actually can do that kind of thing? I mean, we know he's a defensive-minded guy who's a linebacker on a legendary linebacker court. But, I mean, if he really wanted to do that job, wouldn't he have taken it in the offseason? I'm not really sure what the actual issue is. I can't put the game on cam. I mean, three touchdowns, one interception. 357 through the air, 68% completion rate. I mean, and that one interception was just, we just got ripped. I mean, it wasn't really an interception. It was an, it was an airborne fumble. He, the man just got ripped. Kim played about as well as he should have. I said if Kim had 300 yards and kept his turnover was pretty low, we should be able to win this game. That's something that I felt really sure about and very strongly about. But this next thing is something that I don't know exactly how I feel about. Do I put the game more on the defense for forgetting how to tackle anything? Or do I put this game on Devin Funches for proving me right? I had a video a while ago, you can see it above my head over here, where I asked a question, what should the Panthers do with Devin Funches at the end of this season? And in that video, I made a few points. And one of the biggest points was that Devin Funches is our X receiver, but he doesn't really play like a number one receiver. And we have to figure out what exactly our move is going to be. I mean, he has good stats here and there. He makes some good plays. He'll make good plays for you. But he's not a constant. Like, there are some games where he'll just disappear. Some games he'll just have a lot of mental lapses. You just wonder to yourself, is this the number one receiver on a Super Bowl winning team? And, and you have to ask that question to yourself because Devin Funches has some really good stats. He has some really good plays. But he also has some times where he's wondering, is this the guy you want to give a number one receiver contract to next season? I'm not 100% sure what his actual value is going to be to the team. And I can prove this to you right now without using any kind of stats, without talking about any kind of gameplay or anything like that, not using the eye test. This is a contract year for Devin Funches. And you hear literally nobody, nobody in national media, nobody even in the Panthers media, bringing up how this is a Devin Funches contract year, and we're watching him to see what his stats are, how he's looking, and seeing what we're going to do for him in the offseason. There is literally nobody. And you know, there's even people who are these no-name guys who get mentioned, at least in the game. You know how commentators in these games bring up little-known facts and like things for context to look out for in this game, and then further on, just like little tidbits about the team. I don't think not even once has anyone mentioned how this is a contract year for Devin Funches. And I think the lack of people bringing that up speaks kind of to just about how people are feeling about him as a uh, number one receiver in this league. Now, there are some teams that might pick him up and may overpay for him. But my real question is just how much should the Panthers invest in Devin Funches? And I think the real question is if the price is too high for him, just how much of a drop off in talent versus the amount of money we're going to be spending on like a third or fourth round receiver in the draft? I mean, I couldn't tell you who exactly we'll get in the draft. And especially with a lot of cap room we're going to have this offseason, just how much of a drop-off in, in skill and talent will we be getting in Devin Funches versus the 10 or 11 I'd be willing to spend on that. But I think 10 or 11 is probably about right for him. But it wasn't all his fault. I can get to the two-point conversion thing if I really, really wanted to get into it. First of all, I respect two-point conversions. I hate kicking. I think kicking in football is terrible. I think you shouldn't be able to even punt the ball unless you're inside your own 35. I think if you're outside your 35, you should definitely go for it on fourth down. I think all kicking should be out of the game unless you're inside your 35 on fourth down, you can punt. I have a whole different mindset for how aggressive coaches should be and how 
people are playing scared and playing not to lose more than they are to win. So I respect the two-point conversion call, but honestly, man, <laughs> it shouldn't even gone down to that. It shouldn't even come down to us going up by one point and giving the Lions a full minute with, what, two timeouts left on their end? Come on now. We, we could have kicked it. Graham Gano played not so great in that game. That's not really a big deal to me that much. But the real thing is we just look bad. We look like a team that doesn't really want to play. And if we get into the playoffs, I don't see us getting to the Super Bowl. I mean, it's kind of a, come on now. But <laughs> are we going to beat the Saints in the playoffs? If we make the Super Bowl, let's not even talk about the Rams or or even, you know, we have to go against the, the Redskins again. Or even the Cowboys. They look kind of all right now. I can't even say they look really good. But even if we get to the Super Bowl, are we beating the Steelers or the Chiefs? I, I really couldn't call why we lost this game, looking at the numbers, looking at our players, I think we're just a, a moderately good team. I think we're just an above average team that'll probably end up 10 and 6. I don't think 9 and 7 is in our future. We'll probably end up 10 and 6, get the 6th seed from the playoffs. I, I don't I don't see us. I mean, I don't know. Who do we play? It, I mean, if we get the sixth seed, we're either playing the Rams or the or the Saints first round. Take your pick. You let me know in the comments below. What are your thoughts on the game? What did you see? Did I miss anything? What's up with Devin Funches? Should we re-up him next year? What should we be doing with our cap room or our draft? We got to get some edge rushers. We got to get some D-line, something in the draft. I've said this a few times, but I think our first three picks have to be O-line, D-line. Maybe our first four picks. We might have to go deep into this draft picking up some big bodies. Now, I don't want to get too crazy. I think we'll be all right for the rest of the regular season. But honestly, I don't see us making very much noise in the playoffs when we get there, especially with the two top teams in the NFC looking the way they do. Maybe I'm wrong. Let me know in the comments below. And you already know to do with that like button. Cheers to you. Appreciate the chance. Being told y'all I've been the man. Being told y'all I had the gift. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Real ones gonna recommend. Count this as another win.